Is it wrong to try to pick up girls in a dungeon? or Dan Machi for short, recently had its third OVA come out to coincide with the release of Volume 17 of its light novel, and surprisingly, it is quite good. Why do I say surprisingly? Well, as I will go into later on, Dan Machi has not got the best record in regards to its OVAs, but before I go into why this new OVA is good, and the previous OVAs are bad, we first need to cover what an OVA is, and what their aims are. OVAs, or Original Video Animations to use its full name, are anime episodes that are only released in direct-to-DVD or video formats, meaning that they're not first available on TV or in theatres. Since they're not aired on TV, they can include more graphic violence, such as in the case of Helsing Ultimate, or more sexual content, such as in the case of Princess Lover, which is two R-rated OVAs. Nowadays, OVAs are usually used as either an ending to a series, as they ran out of time to properly finish the show, such as in the case of Wonder Egg Priority, a way to cover a canonical side story that they did not have time to cover in the anime, or as a way to maintain interest in the show between seasons, such as in the case of Dan Machi. So what are the actual aims of OVAs that try to maintain interest between seasons, such as the Machi OVAs? Well, there are three aims for these types of OVAs. Firstly, to introduce or reintroduce characters that are going to be important in the next season of anime. Secondly, to have an interesting story or goings-on that keep the viewer interested. And finally, have a crap ton of fan service, as being a direct to DVD release, they can have more etchy than they are able to on TV for censorship reasons. A good example of this type of OVA is the first Konosuba OVA, as it introduces Union, who is important in Season 2, it has an interesting plot where Kazuma is going to die in 4 days due to a choker, and it has a metric ton of fan service. So now we know what a good type of this style of OVA looks like, why were the two previous Danmachi OVAs bad? Well, to start chronologically, in the first Dan Machi OVA, the Hestia familiar and friends find a hot springs in the dungeon on their way out. They then go into the hot springs, and at the end of the episode it turns out that the hot spring water dissolves their clothes. As you can tell, this story is incredibly lacklustre, although the fan service is okay. It just comes off as very basic, with the only saving grace being that highlights Makoto and Ryu, who both become pivotal characters in Season 2. So the OVA comes across as a dull, here are the main characters chilling in a hot springs episode, which is very forgettable. Now in regards to the second OVA, its plot is that the main cast travel to an island where they have a terrible bathing suit contest followed by what amounts to a bizarre magic mushroom party where everyone turns into mushrooms after being lured out into the woods before all turning into one of Cassandra's dreams. Yet, when the OVA returns to the apparent real world, Bell has a mushroom on his head. The story makes zero sense. The fan service is terrible, and any attempt to show off any important characters for the third season is immediately undercut by the bizarre way they are introduced. This OVA is especially hated by light novel readers, as in the second season of Dan Machi, they only covered one of the six chapters of Volume 8, which is a collection of six short stories, with the remaining five chapters that make up the volume being later discarded by the anime as Season 3 starts off at the beginning of Volume 9, rather than picking up where the light novel left off. These five short stories have a lot of fan favourite moments in them, such as Lily finding Belle's Onisama weakness, or Wealth confessing his love to Hephaestus. Yet, instead of getting these sweet story moments, we instead get a bunch of random chibi dancing mushrooms and an awful swimsuit competition. So now that we have set the bar substantially low for Dan Machi's third OVA, I can tell you why it is leagues above the other two OVAs. Surprisingly so. Mainly because unlike the other two OVAs, it actually has a story. The story focuses around a new hot spring spa opening in Arario by the Dian Ketch familiar. Their rivals, the Miat familiar, are suspicious about the hot springs, mainly because it exactly matches the bathhouse that Naza was planning on building. They then kidnap Bell and use him, Wealth, and Hermes as a distraction to infiltrate the building to see what is behind the supply of mineral water. This is all occurring to the backdrop of all the female characters in Danmachi enjoying the new hot spring spa, unaware of the Miat raid that was about to occur. That is already more plot than the last two OVAs combined. The OVA also reintroduces Cassandra and Daphne, who will both be important in the next season of Danmachi. Couple that with the introduction of a new character, Armid Tessina, who will play a minor role going forwards, and you get the sense that Danmachi has finally turned a corner in regards to the quality of its OVAs. This includes its jokes, which nearly all land for the most part, from Hermes transforming from a bench Adam West style, to Belle asking why it is always him. The only joke which did not really land to me was Hermes telling Belle to drink the water. However, I'm just chalking that up to pot necessity and a healthy dosing of male fan service. Speaking of fan service, given the OVA came out at the same time as Volume 17, I find this scene even more amusing given the lengths that Seer goes to to make a situation like this happen again. 
even if the scene is just a one-off fan service OVA exclusive. The decision to use fan service as a backing to the story, rather than the main crux of it, like the previous two OVAs, dramatically improves this OVA compared with its predecessors, as it means that the fan service scenes can occur organically, rather than shoehorning them in, or having it take over the story. The fact that this OVA actually has a somewhat detailed story alone makes this OVA far better than its predecessors, and a definite watch is a warm-up for the season 4 airing this autumn 2021. So, to conclude, the new Dianmachi OVA is surprisingly good, as it actually has a story that is not just sitting in a bath, or something imagined during a fever dream. It reintroduces characters that will matter next season, and it achieves the two things needed for an OVA, being entertaining, and having a boatload of fan service.